This video is packed full of ingenious hacks, hacked into reality by you guys out there yourself. Yep, I've looked into all the content you've sent us for hacks and bodges, and I've found some absolute banger hacks. These are brilliant ideas that are gonna save you spending money. In fact, some of them are absolutely free. They're just ingenious ideas that are gonna help with your riding and your biking life. Right, let's start with a really clever one, storage. And I'm gonna demonstrate this by a great one sent in to us from Johan over in Vienna in Austria. And Johan says uh, he really likes storing stuff on his bike and made a simple hack to plug the bottom of his steerer tube by using that space as storage uh, and using an old analog photo film box uh, one of these little black cylindrical boxes. Ask your dad, he probably has a few kicking around, says Johan, that's a good point. Um, he jammed this little box up into the steerer tube. He says it stays there with friction alone, and he's been using it for about two years now, and it's never come out on its own, which is amazing. Um, to make it easier, he's drilled a little hole through the bottom and used a bit of string to create a little handle. Um, he's stored anything from it, uh, a survival blanket to a tubeless repair kit. All sorts of things you could get in there. Great bit of storage. Now, think about that when you look at your bike. Where could you store things? It's amazing. Once you can get a little bit of space to add something that you might need out on a ride, some zip ties, like Johan said, maybe a repair kit. It can be amazing at a critical moment. Clever little storage solution. Next up, bike maintenance, and we've got three really great examples here from what you guys are doing out there. I like this one. How to true a wheel just using your bike alone. Look what Will has done. He's just put a zip tie on the seat stay of his bike here and cut it to the right length, and then suddenly you can true his wheel from that. Doesn't need a wheel jig or anything. You can just look at that zip tie, spin the wheel, and see how true it is and tighten the spokes where needed. Fantastic, one zip tie. That is a genius idea, keep that one in mind. But what about this, a bit of upcycling. We've got William here, uh, who's used basically an old set of BMX bars and stem, a little bit of pole. Um, he says he's used that from uh, a closet pole. Um, he's used a mountain bike stem. Uh, and a bolt, and basically he's created a fantastic bike stand that's quite attractive to look at and very effective um, and a really nice way. I love people storing their bikes using that hole in the bottom bracket. Uh, really great idea and a beautiful example uh, of using old parts to do that. But what about this idea? Not using bike parts, but Anthony has used an old extension cable spool. He's taken the spool off um, and the metal bar left creates the perfect bike stand shape. He's put it on a plate with some casters and this is ingenious because now it lifts the rear wheel slightly off the ground and the bike is much more maneuverable. So if you're in uh, a house and you're storing your bike maybe in your living room um, and you've got expensive flooring, this is a fantastic way to store your bike, be, still be able to move it around really easily. Three great little bike maintenance and storage hacks. Love it. What about going pro at GoPro? Yeah, I've done this, um, which we'll look at in a second, but I was inspired by Yuan, who sent us in this. Now, he's used a really simple idea. Basically, he's bought an old caster wheel off of the internet, taken the wheel off, but used the little set of forks and bearings that come with it that create the caster motion, uh, turned it upside down, positioned a pole in that, um, and basically you've got a great rotating mount to put on the top of your helmet with the GoPro on the end of the pole. Now, I tried this myself, as you can see, and ended up getting some great shots out on the bow head. Uh, it's a really fun little thing to create, um, but the shots it gives you 
are so much better than the thing you've created. Uh, and if you angle that camera at just the right angle, you can't actually see the pole that it's mounted on. Ewan's got his camera pointing up just a little bit too much. Just tilt it down. I love his expression on his face as he's riding. It's fantastic. But tilt the camera down, he'd have lost the top of his helmet and of course, vision of what was holding the camera in place. And when you're riding, you can move your head and it moves the camera into really cool positions as you're riding. Try it out, it's a great way of GoProing GoPro. Have a go. What about a bit of Sharpie art? Now I'm guilty of this one myself, but take a look at this really cool example from John over in Limerick in Ireland. He's got this helmet and he's decided to make it look maybe like a slightly more expensive version by getting the Sharpie out and drawing some cool pictures. Now I've done this myself using some paint pens. Um, really enjoyable. I did it on a helmet, it just got a little bit of a bump and I thought, ah, let's treat it like a bit of art and mess around with it, come up with something a bit different. Uh, mine definitely different. I was inspired by a Sharpie Heart art helmet that I uh, used back in, uh, oh, a few years ago now over in Whistler and I had this amazing helmet done with some really top level Sharpie art done on it, it looked fantastic. I tried it myself uh, and as you can see John did. The results are varied but it's a lot of fun to do um, and if you want to personalise your helmet, getting a pen out and just having a little bit of a play is a really cool hack that can make a big difference to a helmet that otherwise could be quite plain and boring. Okay, Sharpie Art isn't going to keep you fit, but what about these great ideas? First one is from Steve. He's put a set of handlebars and a sponge in the middle and then some grips on a set of weights to create some floor exercises. That means he's really going to strengthen, particularly when he's using those handlebars, his riding bridge. These are great ideas. Um, if you've got bits lying around, you could make these work. We've got another example, a uh, really plush example here from Clan, who's gone with the same idea, but decided to go that little bit further. You can also attach your mobile phone to this one and play a little bit of POV footage and feel like you're actually riding in the woods by looking at it. There are very expensive versions of this that you can buy, but as you can see, Clan has just used a set of old bars and a chunk of wood. He's bung his mobile phone on there and he's got something to play with. I don't know if it actually works, be good to know from you guys in the comments down below. Does this kind of training actually work? It looks like it might. It looks like it might be a bit of fun. It's a good way to use up some bits lying around in your garage. Be interested if you're going to give it a go. What about a bit of clever security? Now, I'm a big fan of these little Apple Air Tags, okay? There are other brands, um, I don't know who they are, but there are other tags that you can buy for luggage um, that do a very similar thing. You can do, buy one that does the same thing for like a dog or a pet. Um, but basically, they're geotags, which means you can connect it to your mobile phone and find out where that tag is its location. Now hiding these in your bike might be absolutely critical if God forbid bid it was stolen. Um, and these Apple AirTags or similar might be the way to find your bike. So I think it's a really great idea and we've got a good example here from Danny. He's put his one in his stem, I like that. Um, and also Siobhan, she's put one into like a little cap that's been 3D printed and she's put it up into the bottom of her fork using that storage idea but keeping her bike safe and searchable by using a geotag. Great idea, a little bit of extra security to keep your bike safe. Now, mud guards, mud guards, mud guards. These come in lots of shapes and sizes, and I think this is a great way of using some old plastic. Get the scissors out and start cutting. You might be able to make yourself a mud guard for either the fork, kicking out the back of your fork stanchion, or maybe just fitting it in by the chainstay of your bike. Now, I think these little mud guards, the ones you can buy, uh, don't look that different. 
and they really can create a nice little angle on your bike that makes it look really, really cool. Um, we've got some great examples in here that I think are really awesome. Um, I've got some great ones that I really like. We've got one from Michael in Germany. He's created a small fender uh, down by his rear wheel. That one's very, very neat and tidy. I like that a lot. What about this one from McRoyce? He's made himself a little front mudguard, kicking out the front there. Really the advantage is to kick the mudguard out the back on the front. So that's looking really nice. He's also uh, decided to stick one out the back. And that's really going for some. Yeah, that's crazy. So a little bit of Pantene upcycled into some cool mud guards. My favorite though is check out this one. Um, I think this is amazing. It's hand guards. Gary has used a milk bottle. It's basically cut the side out of it, but used the little plastic handle as a mounting point. A couple of zip ties has attached it to his front brake. And he's got some rather disgusting and ugly hand guards. Uh, but who knows, on a cold day or riding down through some very tight trails, they might pay off. Time to get the scissors out, I think. See what you can make. 3D printing, we have been sent some absolutely amazing stuff from you guys that blows my mind. I mean, we've seen chain guards, um, chain guides, we've seen chainstay protectors, we've seen mud guards, we've seen mobile phone mounts, torch mounts, incredible stuff. We had one viewer send us in a tiny little 3D printed bike that used Lego linkage. Absolutely incredible. It blows my mind what you can do with a 3D printer. Um, so if you want to create your own little parts and have some projects, then maybe a 3D printer is for you. There you go. You can't argue with those ingenious ideas that could save you money. Thanks so much to anyone who has sent us content to the GMBN uploader that we've used in Hacks and Bodges. We really appreciate it. And we would love to see your brilliant ideas. So if you've got something, send it in to us. Let us know in the comments down below what was your favorite hack. Um, and if you've got a great idea and you can explain it, the comments is there for you. Make sure you love, like, and share. Uh, and until next time, I'll say goodbye.